This is a video that I've been meaning to make for quite a while, one that details exactly how different defensive layers interact with each other, going from the initial instance of damage and how that damage is calculated, all the way to the final mitigated damage that is taken and everything that happens in between. Now with the gauntlet coming up, I thought now would be a great time to do this video. I've been hanging around a lot of streams and other channels recently and I've seen a lot of discussion about build options and which build has the highest max hit and things like this. But I've also seen a lot of misinformation when it comes to particular mechanical interactions. For example, just in the last couple of days I've seen several people claiming that the Slayer's Brutal Fervor modifier which grants damage reduction while leeching stacks additively with the reduction provided by endurance charges. This is false, they are two entirely different forms of damage reduction that are applied at separate stages of the calculation, and we'll get to that in just a moment. So, let's get started. The first step is the existence of an instance of damage, whether that be a hit or a damage over time ground effect for example. If it's a hit, it can be avoided. Now, when you hear people talk about avoidance in Path of Exile, they'll be referring to things like evasion, block, dodge, and damage avoidance. However, if a hit of damage exists, it can be avoided by preventing that hit entirely, and the prevention of a hit doesn't include all forms of damage avoidance because mechanics such as block avoid the damage of a hit, but they don't actually prevent the hit. So, for this first step, the prevention of a hit includes evasion and spell dodge, both of which avoid a hit entirely if successful. And this step also includes hit type specific avoidance, for example, the Soul of Lunaris upgraded Pantheon Power which provides 10% chance to avoid projectiles. Notice that this avoidance modifier specifies a hit type rather than a damage type. This is an important distinction because damage type specific avoidance modifiers, similarly to block, prevent the damage of a hit but do not prevent the hit itself, thus they are applied further along in the chain. But if the avoidance specifies a hit type, such as melee or projectile, the hit itself is avoided and it occurs at this stage. Okay, so if the hit hasn't been avoided, or if the instance of damage is unavoidable, it moves on to step 2. This is where the full calculation for the originating damage, pre-mitigation, is calculated. So for spells, this is typically a base damage range that appears on the ability itself. And for attacks, this is typically a base damage derived from weapon damage. Then for spells, any added damage is scaled based on the added damage effectiveness of the spell. And for attacks, the base damage is scaled by the effectiveness of attack damage stat, whilst any added damage is scaled by the effectiveness of added damage stat. And these days, these two stats are usually the same. Next, any damage conversion is applied, and this also includes any gain a percentage of damage type A as extra damage type B modifiers, such as those that can be rolled on maps. So if you have those monster modifiers rolled on your maps, like Fizzer's Extra Elemental or Chaos, this is where they are applied in relation to the monster damage calculation. Notably, this is also where you can force monsters to have damage conversion, for example with an item such as Calm's Binding, which converts 25% of nearby monster damage from physical to fire. This is not the same as damage taken as modifiers, which will occur a little later on. Next is the scaling of damage through any applicable damage multipliers. Increases and reductions to damage are added together to form a final value, while more and less modifiers are multiplied together. So for example, if you roll the map modifiers which make the unique boss in the map deal increase damage, this is where that modifier is applied. But this step is also where you can apply modifiers to monsters to lower their damage output. For example, the alternate lightning ailment Sap, which makes targets deal up to 20% less damage, or the malediction debuff, which makes targets deal 10% reduced damage. Then if the hit is a critical strike, the extra damage is calculated at this stage. This portion of damage interacts directly with any modifiers that the defender has for reduced extra damage taken from critical strikes, and will cause the hit to deal less damage according to the magnitude of that modifier. For example, a monster's default critical strike multiplier is 130%, for a total of 30% extra damage from a critical strike. 
So if a character had 50% reduced extra damage taken from critical strikes, that monster's critical strikes on the character would deal 115% of base damage. Next, the actual damage is determined by rolling within the damage range after all of the previous calculations have taken place. This is also where lucky or unlucky damage rolls are applied. Lastly, for the damage calculation, any modifiers which double or triple the damage of a hit are applied at this stage after all of the previous calculations to provide a final hit damage. One thing to note here is that before the mitigation stages, if the entity cannot take a specific type of damage, for example the cannot take reflected damage modifiers, this is where those modifiers would be applied. The next step is damage taken as. For example, the physical hit damage taken as lightning damage which appears on the lightning coil. These modifiers are applied at this stage and they all occur simultaneously which is why damage cannot be shifted multiple times. For example, you can't shift physical damage to be taken into lightning and then into chaos using the lightning coil and divine flesh. Damage can only be shifted into a different type once. When this happens, damage type specific properties are lost. For example, lightning damage that is shifted to be taken as fire damage instead while using Dawnbreaker can no longer shock by default. Now that the damage value and damage types are known, the mitigation stages can begin. The next step is considered to be the damage mitigation stage but it's technically only the first part of mitigation as more steps follow it after. Firstly, any immunities are applied to prevent a damage type entirely, for example, chaos inoculation. Then, any relevant damage avoidance is applied. For example, the elusive buff grants a chance to avoid the damage from hits. When successful, damage avoidance modifiers prevent the damage of a hit, but the hit still takes place. This type of damage prevention is considered to be mitigation for the purposes of modifiers such as the one on Divine Shield. Then, resistance is applied to reduce the damage if it's elemental or chaos damage, and this is also where any penetration modifiers on the attacker side are applied. The reduction provided by resistance is capped at 90%. Then, after resistance is damage reduction. This includes any reduction provided by armor, by default this is going to be for physical damage, but if the character is using transcendence, this is elemental damage reduction, or if the character has the 4th Vow equipped or is using the Juggernaut's Unbreakable Ascendancy Noticeable, this is Chaos Damage Reduction. Any additional damage type reduction is added to the Armor Calculation Reduction. For example, the additional Physical Damage Reduction provided by Endurance Charges is added to Armor's PDR to provide a total damage reduction for physical damage. If there's no reduction from Armor then they're applied just as they are. Just like resistance, damage type specific reduction is also capped at 90%. Then the next step after the mitigation stage is technically another mitigation stage where modifiers to damage taken are applied. This is done in a specific order. First, any flat damage taken modifiers. For example, those granted by Barkskin or this one here on the Formless Flame. Second, any increased or reduced damage taken modifiers. These are added together to provide a final value. This includes modifiers such as the increased damage taken from Shock, or the reduced damage taken on the Slayer's Brutal Fervor Ascendancy Notable. Thirdly and finally in this step, any more or less damage taken modifiers. These are multiplied together. For example, the less damage taken from Flesh and Stone, or the less damage taken from hits from fortification. Spell suppression is also technically a less damage taken modifier and is applied immediately after this step. Then after those mitigation steps have taken place, if the damage is a hit, stun chance is rolled based on the damage of the hit relative to the defender's stun threshold and also the damage type of the hit, including whether it's melee or ranged. Then the next step is block. And you can see just how far block is down in the list compared to something like evasion even though they're both considered to be avoidance. A successful block will prevent all of the damage of a hit by default but the hit will still take place. Importantly, block also prevents an attacker's on-hit effects such as curse on hit. 
Blocking counts as mitigation for the purpose of modifiers such as the one on Divine Shield. After all of those steps have taken place, the damage is now to be dealt to the receiving entity, but it must first be calculated where the damage is dealt to. First, any modifiers which make another entity take the damage before you are applied. For example, the Totem Mastery to make 5% of damage from hits be taken from your nearest Totem before you. If the Totem dies, or if you have no Totems alive, the damage isn't removed, it's simply redirected back to you. Next, any buffs which take damage before your life or energy shield, and this includes things such as Aegis abilities or guard skills. Then, the damage is to be dealt to the defender in an order of resources, beginning with ward if the damage is a hit, and then energy shield, and then life. Once damage is being dealt to life, any modifiers which make damage be dealt to mana before life are applied, such as mind over matter. And at this stage, when damage is dealt to life, this is where any interactions to loss of life from damage taken are applied, for example, petrified blood or dissolution of the flesh. At the end here, I should also mention that damage over time follows the same list of steps as discussed in this video, but it ignores the steps which are specific to hits, for example, evasion, stun, and block. And that's the full order of steps for the calculation of damage and mitigation. Hopefully, this will be a useful resource for anyone wondering how some modifiers interact with each other or when they're being applied. Knowing how these layers stack on top of each other is how some of the tankiest characters in the game are created. For example, resistance and damage reduction are two separate layers which are each capped at 90%. If you were to hit that cap on each, you're effectively mitigating 99% of the damage, and that's before any modifiers to damage taken are being applied so you can reduce the damage even more at those stages too. Thanks for watching this video, and thank you for your ongoing support. As always, stay tuned, and stay safe.